All right, hey everyone, good afternoon. I hope you're having a nice day so far. I am here with... Hi, it's Corey. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you here again. Thank you so much for joining us. So yes, this is a live stream. If you are watching this right here with us, uh, make sure to leave a comment, question, concern, whatever you want uh, down below in the chat box. Corey is reading it. She's monitoring everything closely. And uh, we'll do our best to answer your questions and do like uh, whatever we can. Also, giving shout outs a number of times throughout this video. So make sure to stick your name down below and Corey will uh, give you a shout out as well. So anyway, as you probably saw with the title of this video, we wanted to jump on here really quickly and talk about monthly checks and stimulus checks and how one may be better for the low income and fixed income versus the other. Well, it's not much of a mystery because I made it pretty clear in the title of this video which one is actually better. And again, if you happen to watch that video from earlier this morning, which I hope you did, if you didn't, I would highly, highly recommend after you get done watching this, which by the way, stick around for a while, this will be pretty good. We'll answer a bunch of questions for you. But when we get done with this, if you have not seen that video from earlier today, I would highly recommend checking that out. That is actually very, very interesting. A study that was recently conducted and they found some very interesting and very fascinating information based on all the money, as in the stimulus checks that were sent out over the last few years to uh, basically all the American people, 85% of the population, they found one consistent uh, commonality between all of it. Guess what it is? Sending money to low income and fixed income is way better, it's more efficient, and um, it, it actually stimulates the economy in a better way than giving money to higher income people. Hmm, why would that be? Interesting. I'll talk through the details here in this live stream, as well as I talked about it in great detail in that video earlier. So anyway, uh, any, any chats? I would love to do some like shout outs. Shout outs? Yeah. All right, awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, Linda, Perfect. Linda Cox. Nice. John Lurigiato. Mm -hmm. um, Nancy Piles. Nice. Kathy DeMio. Um, Karen Hankins, Mike Sheets, Felicia DeStrykland, mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth Winters, Anita Thomas, Brandon Allen, Karen Greger, Sandra Hearth, Helen Rutherford, Brian Burton, Linda Al um, Angelico, Margaret Gray, Lisa Strouth, Kalando yes. Roberts, Renee Nicely, Scott Clary, Pretty Little Panko, Gary Salas, Helen Barella, um, Keith, uh, Debbie Keith, Dane Crawford, Ashley Easley, Mike Aldridge, Aldridge um, Evan Robertson, Joni Filia, Robin Brockett, Patty, Patsy Mullins, <laughs> Joseph Russell, Buck, wow. Aiden Bryan, Beach Babe, Salvador Bonifiglio, Jason Franklin, Nunu, mm -hmm. Johnny Cordova. We'll go with that for now. Wow. Look at that. There's, and there's more. I just, you guys are just wow. great. Like, this <laughs> That's, is great. Thank you. This is great. A lot of uh, familiar names at the same time. A lot of new names. Yeah, I feel uh, like we a are. A lot of new names. That's new great. Names. Yeah, good stuff. I, I recognize quite a few names from previous live streams over the last couple of weeks here. And of course, comments on the videos. But then again, some names that I thought, oh, that sounds like a new name. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool yeah. stuff. By the way, if you're new here or if you haven't done so, make sure to subscribe down below. A lot of stuff going on right now. We're approaching the end of the year and 2024 is going to be very, very busy. Between now and then, it's going to be very busy as well. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so. All right, so any questions, anything like that yes, so far? Yes, there are. Um, can you do a video about medicals CDR reviews? Oh, that would be a good one. Yeah, I honestly- Oh, and I'm sorry, that was from Brandon Allen. Oh, sorry. Brandon, yeah, I could definitely do that. Um, I've never talked about that. I could definitely do that. I'm assuming uh, based on your comment there, you're probably an SSDI beneficiary. That's what I would assume. So um, yeah, I can do that. Okay, stay tuned. Let me work on that for you. That's kind of a big topic that I honestly, I don't want to really dig into yet in this video, this live stream right now. But yeah, that's a great one. I can certainly do that for you. So yeah, cool. Anything else real quick? Um, Scott Clary wants to know any idea when the vote is for any of the stimulus checks that are supposed to be going out as um, yeah. Do you know any of those? Oh, votes? Um, no, nothing as of right now, Scott. Yeah. So I'm not sure if other people are, t if you're hearing that from other people or where, um, but as of right now, no, there's no votes that are scheduled at anything as of right now. So yeah, hope that helps you, Scott. But yeah, as of right now, nothing. Um, if other people are saying that votes are happening and checks are coming in tomorrow, I'm sorry, Scott, it's not happening as of right now, okay? So as I've said before in these videos, I will bring you the honest, accurate, reliable, and transparent information every single day in these videos, even sometimes when it's things you don't wanna hear. The reason being is, 
I want to be, uh, be here for you and bring you the information that's actually happening rather than, you know, just blowing smoke like some other people here do. But just saying, um, I want to do that for you. So anyway, let's quickly talk about the details of what I want to uh, emphasize here in this video, okay? So probably uh, by the title of this video, you probably recognized, okay, monthly checks instead of stimulus checks. What do you mean by that? Here's the thing. Now, I kind of want to reference that video that I refer or that I uh, released this morning, okay? If you saw that, pretty interesting, right? So let me just kind of highlight a little bit of it from the details of that video. So basically, I was talking about something called MPC, which stands for Marginal Propensity to Consume. Do you know what that means? I honestly, I don't. Okay. I can't even pretend. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty interesting, right? <laughs> it's just a really smart way of saying, as they conducted the studies, they came up with this acronym, MPC, Marginal Propensity Consume. Basically, what they found is that somebody with a high MPC is exactly the type of person they want. Somebody with a low MPC is somebody that they don't want. Okay, well, how do you determine who you are? Here's what they found. People that are low income, generally below $40,000 of income, have a high MPC. What does it mean? It simply means that if they give somebody with a high MPC money, generally that person spends 80 plus percent of the money in 10 days or less. Now bad, right? Now remember, let me uh, emphasize this really quickly and just remind you, what is the purpose of stimulus checks? It's to help all of us out, right? No, unfortunately it's not, okay? The whole purpose of stimulus checks is they use us as a proxy to, uh, to inject money into the economy very quickly, okay? They use us. Whoa, did you know they use us? <laughs> huge shock. shock. <laughs> huge shock, right? They use us. But here's the thing. If they're gonna give us money and say, we're gonna use you, but we're gonna, uh, we're gonna give you a check to do it. I'll say, hey, use me all you want. <laughs> give some checks this way, you know what I mean? So. I'm fine with that. They can use me if they give me a check. What do you think? I, I, yeah. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> to some degree. You know what I'm saying. But anyway, I'm just kind of trying to be a little bit funny. But you get, you get my point. But anyway, the whole purpose of stimulus... I know, that could have turned really bad. <laughs> right? Yeah. <he's> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but you get my point, right? Uh, but anyway, the whole purpose of stimulus checks is when the economy is in a contraction or a recession, they send out hundreds of billions or a lot of money, you know, usually it's, or lately it's been hundreds of billions of dollars worth of stimulus checks. And they use us, the people, to take that money because they direct us to spend that money to stimulate the economy and inject a lot of money into the economy very quickly. That's the purpose of stimulus checks. In fact, let me tell you this really quickly. Remember the stimulus checks over the last three years, 2020, early and late 2020, and then early 2021? What were they technically called? They were technically called EIP, Economic Impact Payments. So there you go. It tells us right there with the name, they're actually called economic impact because they want us to impact the economy with all this money, right? Anyway, so the whole point behind this is what they found from this study is that somebody with a high MPC who is low income because generally uh, generally people that have a, a low, sorry, generally people that have a high MPC are low income. They spend the money quickly and they spend almost all of it. Whereas they found somebody with a low MPC is generally a higher income person, spends the money very slowly and generally when they do spend it, they maybe only spend about 50% of it. Do they want those people? No, they really don't want those people. Why? Because they don't do they don't do what the government wants. The government wants to give us money in the form of stimulus checks when they do to stimulate the economy. High income people, sorry, they don't do that. What do they do? They pay down bills. Sorry, paying down bills does not stimulate the economy. But low income people they know where it's at. They do exactly what the government wants. And again, that's exactly what that study was showing. So very interesting. I can get into it a lot more, but really quickly, any comments, questions? Um, let's see here. I do. I found it to be very fascinating, this report, by the way. You probably saw that in the video from earlier. Watch it. I, I get super excited. <laughs> it is pretty exciting. It is. Um, let's see here. What happened to the Restoration Act that brings SSI to at least the poverty level? That's Renee Nicely. Oh, Renee, that's a great question. Yeah, that's still out there. It has not been passed yet, but yep, it's still out there. Uh, there's a variety of people in the House of Representatives who want to get that done. Um, it's still there, like a lot of pieces of legislation, but nothing has happened with it. It's actually been there for probably... I don't know, three years or so. I want to say like three years. I'm just guessing uh, three-ish years or so. It's been around. They haven't done anything with it, but it's still there. So I'm very interested to see what happens with it, you know, over the coming, I'm going to say year, basically between now and probably November of next year, 2024, which by the way, I don't know what day voting is of November, 2024, but it's 
I don't know, probably exactly about a year from now. Today's the, what's the sixth Seven. today? Oh, no. Yeah. Today's the sixth the today? Yes. Yeah, so I think it's about exactly almost a year. I don't know the exact date next year uh, when the votes go down, but it's probably like very close. Actually, wait. Tomorrow's the seventh. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's probably, yeah, it's yeah. very, very close to like exactly a year from now. Um, yeah. Good question, Renee. Anything else really quickly? Um, no other questions right at this top right now, um, but okay. I will look up voting. Okay, yeah, look Election day for 2024 is November, Tuesday, November 5th. Oh, that was yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. We're like literally exactly a year out. Well, you know what I mean? Close enough, right? Yeah. Um, interesting. Okay. So you watch for questions. I know I am. I just want okay. to look that up really quick. <laughs> All right. Nice. <laughs> All right. So anyway, let me discuss the details about this really quickly. So what they continue to find now, here's what we found over the last couple of years. Did the stimulus checks uh, translate into inflation? Well, that's the question that's still up for debate. Depends on who you ask. Some people say, oh, all this all this inflation we've been dealing with for the last, what, two and a half years now since mid-2021 was all because of stimulus checks. In fact, I've talked about this before. It's been, I don't know, quite a, quite a while since I talked about this, but... In my opinion, I do not think the stimulus checks caused all the inflation. Reason being, stimulus checks cost about $850 billion in total, and they printed $6 trillion. So my rebuttal to that would be, okay, stimulus checks were $850 billion, but out of the $6 trillion that they printed, what happened to the other, what, $5.15 trillion? What happened to that, right? So that's what I would say is that probably caused most of the inflation. Maybe the stimulus checks caused a little bit of inflation, maybe caused some of the supply chain issues. But other than that, I would not say that 850 billion out of 6 trillion caused all the inflation. It just doesn't make logical sense. There's no way, right? So anyway, uh, basically what they're saying with this report is that, hey, next time, maybe we don't need to send stimulus, check, uh, stimulus checks out to 85% of the population, but maybe we could just focus those checks on the lower 25 to 30, maybe 35% of our population and give them ongoing monthly checks, $2,000 a pop, because guess what? The low income, these individuals have a high MPC. They spend all or at least 80% of the money within 10 days, exactly what they want. The money injected into the economy as fast as possible to bring it back, to revive it when it's in an economic contraction or recession. Does that kind of make sense? So that's what they're finding from these studies and very interesting. So what they continue to find is that uh, low income individuals and ongoing monthly checks is like the gravy solution, not a broad stimulus checks to everybody because now we have inflation, we have widespread supply chain issues, and we have all kinds of other intrinsic um, you know, issues that go on because of that. Whereas if they just did you know, uh, highly focused checks for the low income. Well, now it's not going out to nearly 85% of the population, maybe 25 to 35%, roughly based on the, the math that they're telling us here. And then basically we don't have all the issues that we did over the last couple of years. Seems like a great solution, right? Which by the way, then somebody earning 150 or 200 grand a year as a married couple is not getting a couple thousand dollars in checks. Let's be real. Do they really need it? No, they don't need it. Do they want it? Uh, they probably want it, <laughs> but do they need it? No, they don't need it, right? There's a big, big difference between need and want. So anyway, it kind of eliminates the, the whole process of giving checks to higher income people, focuses that money on low income people, and it does all the other effects by avoiding inflation at the same time. I don't know. Again, it's like the perfect solution. I don't know. It's like the Goldilocks, right? I don't know. Have you ever heard somebody say that? The Goldilocks? I don't know. I, I think I've heard that before. I just came up with that. No, I've heard it before. I, I, say, <laughs> I didn't like, just make that up. Like, I want to be like, oh, yeah, but I'm, I'm yeah. going to go with no one. <laughs> okay. No, it's like the perfect solution. <laughs> <Okay>. Really. <laughs> um, Joseph Russell wants to know, yeah. can you do a video on how to get a raise by working part time on SSDI? Yeah, um, I could. Yeah, I could do that. Joseph. Yep. Yeah, I could do that. It's actually um, not quite as hard as you think, Joseph. Uh, basically just working and um, basically the more you pay in through Social Security payroll taxes, um, they kind of just adjust your benefits the following year. So yeah, I can obviously make a dedicated video for you and highlight that more and talk through it in uh, greater detail. But yeah, uh, Joseph, I can certainly do that for you. Yeah. Do you, okay, I think that's good. Yeah. Um, Paula Noble wants to know how long do we have to wait for a stimulus in the amount of $2,000 and ongoing monthly checks in the amount of $1,000? That's a great question, which by the way, Paula has been around for, I don't know, Paula, I've seen your name around for a long time. So thank you. I appreciate it. Probably like three, three and a half years I've seen Paula's name around. So thank you. She comments on like every single video. I love it. Thank you, Paula. I really appreciate it. Uh, that's a really good question. 
It's all really going to come down to the economy. I know that that's not the answer that anybody wants to hear. I get it, right? I sometimes don't even want to say that answer, but that's literally what it comes down to. Right now, the economy is not quite as bad as it needs to be in order for all this to happen, okay? That's why I got to continue watching it here. If things continue to go down, as in if the dominoes continue to fall and it gets as bad as many people are suggesting it's going to, probably in early 2024, based on what it's looking like right now, based on the models and stuff like that, if it really gets as bad as we think, well, we'll have to see what happens there. Because remember, when things start to happen, Congress actually moves quickly. Have you ever seen a turtle move fast? I know it happens. You you can it happens sometimes. I've seen it right years ago. Um, actually, quick little side story. When I was growing up, um, where I lived, there was a little wetland area behind where we lived there, and there were turtles all over the place. And as a kid, I loved playing with the turtles. Right. So anyway, my point is, you think a turtle's like, oh, they're small, until you start walking up to them, and then they like run away. It's like, wait, I didn't know a turtle could move that fast. My point is, Congress is like a bunch of turtles. They don't do anything. They just sit there and just like lay around. And then when there's finally a reason to move fast, it's like, wow, they've surprised us. They can actually move fast when they want to. My point is um, when the economy really starts to get hammered, they can actually do stuff pretty quick, okay? One little reference that I wanna give you quickly, which is early 2020, things were happening pretty fast, right? Everything was getting closed down. Things were being canceled. Congress was just twiddling their thumbs. And before you know it, they passed a $2.3 trillion package called the CARES Act in like less than a month. In like two to three weeks time, they went from idea to passing it. So that was very fast when it comes to uh, Congress, okay? My point is we got to see what happens here. So generally, they don't move quickly at all, but when there's an urgency, they can actually do things relatively quickly, which by the way, the CARES Act is the one that included the $1,200 checks that we all got in about mid-April of 2020. <sighs> Weren't those the days? I mean, seriously, you remember that? I do. Forced to stay at home and wear our pajamas all day. Darn, hate when that happens. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, I've got a couple more questions. Okay. Um, Bill wants to know, can I go back to school with a $100 VA comp and pension or will I get deducted? Oh, Bill, that's a really good question. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I honestly do not know the answer to that, okay? Um, I would have to look that up. Honestly, Bill, I, I don't know, okay? I'm just, I don't even have a clue on like where to guess on that one, so... Just being honest with you, Bill, I don't know. I wish I knew the answer to that, but I've made it transparent before in other videos that uh, I don't know the answer to everything. I I wish I did, but I don't. So, Bill, I apologize. I wish I knew. Let me do some research on that. Um, that's where a good do you one. think he could go? Like, where do you know a resource he could go to or not uh, really, honestly? Honestly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type it in the internet. That's all I'm going to do. So that's the best place I'm going to look. I, I don't know. It's a really good question. I don't know that. Okay. I wish I did. Sorry, Bill. Okay, um, let's see here. Robert Jernigan yep. wants to know, Matt, if you don't do taxes every year and they give you stimulus money and you are an SSDI, how do we get it? Um, so that's a really good question. So um, when they did the stimulus checks, the last you know the last three rounds that we did, the twelve hundred, the six hundred, and the th uh, the fourteen hundred over the last you know couple years here. The way that they did that is even for those non-filers like a uh, retiree, an SSDI, an SSI beneficiary, remember that whole situation? Uh, basically what happened is the Social Security Administration basically gave the IRS a whole log of all the beneficiaries. So they basically gave them a file that says, hey, here you go, IRS. Here's the 71 million beneficiaries. Actually, it's more than that now of all the people that we send benefits to. And then the IRS said, thank you very much. We will process these payments. So that's actually the reason that we did not get stimulus checks for fixed income beneficiaries for what was it? Almost a month uh, delayed for the stimulus check number three. Remember the $1,400, how that one was delayed? Um, I could go into the details about that really quickly if you want me to, but it was March, e what was it? March 11th. No, it was March 17th. I apologize. March 11th, it was signed into law by Biden. Uh, President Biden signed it into law, um, the American Rescue Plan. And then six days later, March 17th, 
It was something like 90 million people got all their checks that day, except for fixed income beneficiaries. Well, then finally on April 7th of, this was 2021, by the way, um, checks finally went out. Well, what happened there during that time, if you were around watching the videos here, basically we were trying to figure out what was going on. I was making tons of videos. I was doing live streams at the time. We were all trying to figure out what was going on. Why aren't checks going out to fixed income? Like what happened here? What happened is the Social Security Administration did not send over the file to the IRS and that's what caused the delay. So it was almost a month delay of why fixed income beneficiaries did not get their checks. Um, and that's why, because the file wasn't sent over. So anyway, long story short, um, it, it was kind of an interesting time. I felt like a detective at the time. I was calling Social Security. I was calling the IRS. I was calling all kinds of people every day trying to get answers. And uh, we finally figured it out. And that was why. Because the Social Security Administration has the file. They're supposed to give it to the IRS to issue those payments. But that's what happened. They, they didn't send it over. Which, by the way, the commissioner at the time was let go or fired or whatever happened then. So interesting, right? So Robert, hope that answers your question. Okay, I want to do some shout outs. I know okay? that was like a really long winded answer, but um, takes us back to the day, right? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, shout outs. Yeah, let's okay. do it. <laughs> um, shout outs are awesome. Nessa yeah. Tucker. Um, cool. Nessa Tucker said, hey, all too. Um, nice to see you. I, it's, I've never been able to catch one of your live feeds. I'm ah, super cool. excited to be here. So nice. Thanks I just for being wanted here. to say that. So thank <laughs> That's you. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, Jacqueline Banks, Liv Lavinia Dickerson, John Beckham, mm -hmm. um, Lindia Sanders. Eula Brown, Heather Thompson, Barbara Watkins, Jennifer Reed, um, Alessandra Medellin, Bill, Katrina McGodney, Donald Schroeder, Kimberly Long, Tammy Palmer, Kinda Cool, <laughs> Davin, <laughs> Paula Noble, <laughs> Sherry Berlin, Ronald Lee, mm, Southside D, Scott Clary, John Ir Irvin, Irvin mm -hmm. um, uh, Kamla Shur Shuri, um, Pamela Snell, Jeanette Ellis, Jack New Jersey Double, nice. Alicia Ferguson, um, Tanya Kendrick, Edith Cl Claxton, Claudette Con Conyers. So nice. just wanted to give some shout outs. Ah, so. thank you. That's great. Thanks everyone for being here. This is awesome. Um, by the by the way, Davin uh, sends me very nice emails often. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, nice. Devin's been around for a while, so thanks for the nice emails. I appreciate it. Yes, I see them. I know I have a hard time um, replying sometimes, so I apologize for the delays, but yes, I've seen them. Well, it makes me feel better that I'm not the only person he ignores. <laughs> right. <laughs> not ignoring. I see stuff. I Sometimes I just, like, literally in the middle of something, I can't repl reply right away. So, I know. Yeah. It's Any questions, concerns, sometimes. stuff like that? Um, to be honest, a lot of just, like, highs, like, nice. um, okay. things like that. So. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So anyway, I wanted to come back in this live stream here. We wanted to talk about it and catch you live to uh, answer questions, concerns. It looks like there's probably not a whole lot at this point, which is either, I don't know if that's a good thing. I hope maybe makes, makes me feel like maybe I'm explaining it um, pretty thoroughly. Do you think or? I feel like you are. Okay. Am I explaining in too much detail? I don't know. I get excited about this stuff because it's like, it's kind of fascinating to look back in history to see what happened and then try to predict the future as in, hmm, what are they going to do here going forward, right? So anyway, there's been a lot of studies that have been conducted and reports and surveys and all kinds of things like this since the stimulus checks went out in early 2020, late 2020, early 2021, they've gathered a ton, a ton of data. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens next time, next round. And again, when is that going to happen? We don't know yet. We don't know. However, when the economy crashes and burns, that's when it's going to happen. Okay. That's all it's going to really take is that a big global uh, economic crash, which <laughs> literally is probably not too far-fetched at all to say something like that. There are so many different catalysts that are on the table right now. Any one of them could trigger something like this, okay? I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, it's all doom and gloom. I don't want to say that. I'm just simply saying there's a ton of catalysts right now. Generally, there's not this many. There's a lot. There's a lot of things right now that could trigger a massive meltdown in the economy. But here's the thing. If you're in the in, if you're in the camp of saying, hey, I want another stimulus check, that's actually music to your ears. <laughs> you probably want to hear something like that. Even if you're receiving a fixed income benefit, you'll still get paid. If the economy goes down, who cares? You get paid. Prices go down. 
It's not a bad thing with that, right? Inflation will maybe finally come down. Checks may be distributed. It would be probably, honestly, not the worst thing in the world, okay? I wanna say this really quickly as well. Think of a recession. A lot of people look have this negative connotation with a recession, like, oh my, it's the worst thing ever. Think of it this way. It's just a reset. It's like pushing the reset button on your router for your Wi-Fi or turning your phone off and turning it back on, something like that. It's literally just resetting the system. It's probably a good thing. Just being honest with you, it's actually a good thing. So it purges a lot of stuff out of the system like debt and all kinds of things. So it's pretty good at the end of the day. Um, make sense? I think it does. And people people say that you're making sense and that you they appreciate how you're explaining things. Yeah. So for the people who are commenting and saying that. Yeah, that's good. So anyway, yeah, that's good. Um, what I wanted to explain here, though, is just basically say the next round here, okay? So again, I don't want to sit here and promise anything. I don't know. But what I'm saying is what I want to clarify is based on all the studies, based on everything that's been uh, conducted here over the last couple of years, it's, very, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens the next time we go into this major economic contraction, okay? Reason being is maybe they will take into consideration all of these studies and the reports and stuff like that that they've done over the last couple of years and think, hey, we really don't need to send checks out to the everybody out there in the whole country. 85% of the population, that is not necessary. But the reports, like I shared with you in that video from this morning was, hey, if we just send out ongoing checks, two grand or something like that for a highly focused small group of low-income people and the fixed income, this will give us the same economic impact, the same economic effect. It'll mitigate uh, inflation as in there won't be a risk of inflation nearly as much because it would only cost something like 250 to maybe $300 billion versus about $850 billion. So the effects would be way worse. And again, it would basically achieve all of the goals that they want, which is economic growth, economic stimulus, um, lack of supply chain issues, basically lack of inflation issues, and basically helping out the people that actually need it rather than giving money to somebody that doesn't need it, who's just gonna pay down debts or pay down bills or go buy a new set of golf clubs or <laughs> you know something like that. So is that gonna make sense? So I, I, Can I pipe in though quick? Because yeah. people are commenting about that specifically. If you have debt to pay off, it, it is a good choice if that's yeah. how you wanna use your stimulus. So there's nothing wrong with doing that. No, like that would be- not. That's a good choice. For sure. So I would definitely yeah. advocate for that. For sure. I would yeah. definitely say that. If you're in a that. situation where you can do that, yeah. that's great. So. I'm just I'm just saying based on the study is they found that higher income people generally use most of it to pay off debt. But I mean, if you're somebody that is lower income and you have some debts like credit cards or something, I would be all over that paying those credit cards off. Interest rates on credit cards right now are bad, like 22% or something like that. I haven't looked at it in a little while, but it's really bad right now. So yeah, I would definitely be paying that off quickly because that's not fun to pay. So, okay, anything else? Um, I'm gonna actually read one more question if that's all right. Yeah. Okay, and then we're gonna probably have to wrap it up, but um, uh, Sasha, oh, Sasha Kambui said, um, and I'm just gonna read it how she wrote it. Um, Why after two years of Medicare premiums, parts A and B, you never announced the part A monthly premium change after constant Constantly asking two years why now do you never announce part a there are approximately eight million yeah that's a good one so sasha um yeah sasha yeah right um why don't i talk about part a i don't know it's just something that i just honestly don't really talk about um generally part a is included and i don't know just a lot of times i just don't talk about it the reason that i talk about part b so much is because generally the premium on it is way more expensive and that's one of those things that it's optional um you can opt in up to part b you don't need to have part b you can um i don't know i just focus on part b because that's kind of the one that people are like well you know that one kind of is not fun to pay so i don't know I don't, honestly, I don't really have a good answer for you other than the fact that I just focus on part B because that's kind of the one that um, kind of irritates people the most. And that's the one that people are most concerned about, whereas Medicare part A is typically just included. And, you know, that's kind of why. It's kind of like more so, of a variable versus a fixed thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I guess I could start talking about it. I could add it in. It's not like <laughs> it's not like it's that hard for me to just add it into all the stuff that I talk about anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sasha. I appreciate it. Yeah, seriously. If you ever want me to talk about something or highlight something or whatever, um, just let me know. Which, by the way, Sasha, I apologize. If you've left comments on videos asking me to include that, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never seen that in a comment. So if I would have, I mean, I could certainly do it. But I'm just saying, I don't think I've ever seen that in a comment. So I apologize. And we're not saying Part A is fun to pay. We're just saying that there's more of a variable and like a choice with Part B versus there just isn't a choice with Part A. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, which by the way, if you opt out of Part B, which by the way, I opted out of Part B for like, 
six years or something, there's a huge penalty. You don't want to pay the penalty. I can tell you that much, okay? So yeah. Um, but yeah, you can take part B. It's optional. Uh, but once you do, if you delay, by the way, there is a penalty and it's, it's not cool. So you, yeah, it's a penalty that's honestly not fun to pay either. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any final thoughts? No, I think we're good. Okay. Any other shout outs or? Um, I'll do a couple quick shout outs <laughs> okay, and then we can nice. kind of wrap it up. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, Leah Ketchum S. Smith. Benjamin Segrees, mm -hmm. um, Mary Quello, Donna Bredson, Joy Fell, Sherry Hoffman, John K. June, um, okay, nice. Liddy Angelico, Thelma, Candy Phillips. Okay. Yeah. There Perfect. We go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. Have That's a nice great. day. Yeah. Have a nice day. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy your day. Subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you again later in the next video. Bye. See ya.